Welcome and welcome back beautiful souls to the channel. I'm Shika, your medicine woman, and today we'll be going over an energy update for this Aquarius new moon. And it's also the Lunar New Year, the Chinese New Year. So these two very potent energies are overlapping during this new moon in Aquarius. So I'll be going over how this Aquarius new moon as well as the Lunar New Year will affect you three days before the day of and three days after. We'll be pulling out some cards and I'm also gonna break it down with the numerology meaning as well. So before we get into the video, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, like, subscribe, put notification bells, it helps the channel a lot, but most importantly, you get to be part of this amazing community. And I talk about all things, channel messages. I also share a lot on plant medicine, new moons, bull moons, healing. If that is your vibe, then you found your community and welcome. So. A couple things I want to share with you guys. I am opening my one-on-ones rebirth program for this spring and summer. So if you are interested in working with me in the spring and summer, you can go and apply the link down below, as well as there's two retreats. The days are coming up slowly for the retreats to close for registration. So if you are interested in the goddess retreat, as well as the ancestral retreat, you can apply down below, as well as trainings, courses, all those things. Okay, let's talk about Aquarius new moon. I'm actually really excited for this new moon. It's an energy that feels uh, very potent and I'm laughing because there's so much I want to share with you guys. Of course, I got my notes here and guys, I got a new deck, which I'm so excited. This deck does not play around. So we're going to be pulling out some cards from this deck. First off, who are the Aquariuses? Do you have Aquarius in your chart? Is it your moon, your sun, your rising? Or do you know someone or someone close to you that is an Aquarius? Let me know. And if you're not an Aquarius, regardless, let's do a little check-in. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? How have you checked in with yourself? We are now in February, and I really like to say this time is really the true new year in astrology and in the moon and the stars. You know, a lot of us as humans, we think that it's the, the day that the year changes, but if you've been feeling a lot since January, December, January, of almost like the energy of death, like the death tarot card, uh, a lot of new beginnings, but like wondering why isn't it starting because the change of the year is different. Well, this is why, because it starts now. This Aquarius new moon represents the actual starting of our energetic new year. And it aligns in February, all through February, going into March. Now, the beautiful thing is we have no planets in retrograde. Everything is clear. And on the other side of that, with this Aquarius and new moon, it's really testing us on what new beginnings do we want to start and be energetically responsible for them. What I mean by that is we can't blame retrograde. We can't blame the stars. We can't blame the moon. We can't blame all the things, right? So not being in a victimhood space. And this Aquarius new moon is teaching us how we can start being the painters of our reality and fighting for with our hearts what we really want so this brings me to the first official thing about this february 9th 2024 and i will say february 10th depending on where you are in the world as it is the lunar new year as well and what you need to know how it will affect you three days before the day of and three days after for this aquarius new moon is emotional stability feels hard to reach prepare for astrological end of the year as it is the lunar new year so this is a time where you're feeling the density you know three days before you may feel almost like a volcano erupting with it emotionally i want you to look at what this emotion is now what's the opposite of that emotion that is what spirit is rebalancing you to tap into so for example if it's jealousy then you're tapping into the energy of abundance, which we'll go into, make a little note of that. You know, abundance, I have everything I need. I don't need to look outside of myself. I don't need to compare myself to others. I don't have the pressure to compare myself to others, right? If it's irritation or anger, then feeling the energy of unconditional love, feeling the sense of happiness, right? So this is an opportunity where the new moon is teaching us as new moons are all about new beginnings, new values, uh, new intentions. 
it's understanding how can we meet both ends of the stick? How can we meet both ends of the emotions? And how can we allow the eruption to occur so that we can finally have a clear mind, a clear thought of what we need to do next? So again, this is a beautiful time to really look at what emotion, you can write this down actually for this Aquarius new moon, what emotion is coming up right now, right? And after the Aquarius new moon and the lunar new year, you can ask yourself, how does this emotion prepare me for the new beginning that I am stepping into? Whew, write that down. What this is going to do is it's going to teach you that again, the universe is never against you. It's with you. It's supporting you for something that you might not necessarily see right this moment. This brings me to the second thing you need to know about this Aquarius new moon that is happening on February 9th or 10th, 2024, three days before the day of and three days after the energy of the dragon. So this year is the energy and the totem of the dragon. I love dragons. Energetically, they are such beautiful, mystical teachers. And I want to talk about the meaning of dragon, how it relates to the Aquarius new moon for this point. So dragons totems, if anyone relates to them, maybe you feel connected to it, maybe you see them in a dream, maybe you are just like, that's something you tattooed on yourself for some reason, whatever it is. Um, dragons represents the wise medicine. They are the representation of life before humanity. They represent this mysticism, this, this magic, this imagination, right? The ability to feel and to sense the dragon spirit is that mystic energy that it's calling within you. So it brings us to that representation. What new beginning is being created in the unseen, in the mystic, in the mystery? And for you to stay curious, even if you feel your emotions are heightened during this Aquarius, you move three days before the day and three days after. Do not give up to yourself to continue to believe in creativity and imagination. To not lose that magic that you have inside of you, because that's going to be very important for the year of the dragon. Now, the dragon also represents money, freedom, and abundance. And why I want to really highlight this is because 2024 is the year of eight, which is an abundance. And if you haven't checked out my video that I talk about the forecast prediction of 2024, go check it out because this will really support you with this. Like I'm seeing so many grids and connections between everything that is being shared here. So what it's talking about is eight is infinite. It's talking about the abundance of the heart. So maybe some of you are actually concerned conceiving or maybe birthing a baby three days before the day of the three days after this child is almost like this luck for your lineage and a karmic clearing so this is really potent what that means is if you're conceiving a child and this is not for everyone and i will talk about even if you're like i'm not i don't want a baby right now i'm done with children or i'm not in that stage right now i have a message for you after this but if you are conceiving a child or if you are birthing a child onto our side, whatever it is, this child is going to be very potent. You know, Aquarius is justice, freedom, speaking out. You know, they are here to fight for the greater good, the truth, right? And this is what this child is blessing your family with, is the truth and a new beginning of something deeper um, for humanity itself, which is really potent. Now, if you are not in that space of having a child, or maybe you're dying or you know you're just like that's not that doesn't resonate the other area of eight is also representation of unionship right so this is a great time where you know you may be feeling that emotions are high but it, it actually brings up a new need that you need to communicate with your partner or your friendships right that actually opens up a new door a new step a new commitment relationship part of that relationship that you're currently in the other meaning of the dragon and the spirit of the dragon is birthing an idea into existence. So this is a time where you finally get clarity on the new project, business idea, the new thing that you've been waiting for spirit to give you clarity on. Remember that when we seek for things, we don't find it. So this Aquarius new moon, why it's heightening certain emotions is to remind you that when you're seeking against, uh, against the waters, against 
nature itself, you actually make more work for yourself. So where are you putting energy where it's not actually showing you paying it forward? You're going to get a lot of clarity on that during this new mood. And it's going to help you increase your abundance in whatever way that is. That could be financially, that could be in love life, that could be in relationships, that could be in your happiness, your freedom, all of those emotions on the other side of jealousy, anger, and pain, and all those things that were purged as we come to the end of a cycle, you know, it's a nine energy and it's February 9th, right? So it's ending of a karmic cycle. I'm going to pin that because I'm going to go back to that as well. Now, the third thing that you need to know about this Aquarius U moon that's happening on February 9th and 10th, 2024, three days before the day of and three days after how it will affect you. We're going to continue to talk about the dragon here. The dragon also means do not let emotions ride the manifestation of reality, of manifested reality that you know is only meant that shall pass so let me just because i'm just sometimes i channel things i'm like what did i say what that means is that the dragon is the energy of teaching us and this year alone because eight is constantly every single day being a frequency with us is teaching us that our words are instant manifestations whether we see it or not so specifically during this aquarius new moon aquarius is the sign of freedom um, happiness, justice, what is right for the collective. Um, you know, we talk about systems, all those things. So when we look at that and the systems in ourselves and how that will erupt things, you know, being triggered or seeing unfairness or seeing, you know, what the idea of fear and freedom is of humanity. When we tune into that within ourselves, how does that affect us? You know, where have we felt freedom? Where have we felt fairness? Where have we felt non-fairness? Where have we felt not free, right? These things are going to come up again. Maybe you start a new job and the same situation happens from the job you left, right? This is an opportunity to see that you chose that job. That was a choice that you chose. The new beginning of the Aquarius New Moon is teaching you what are you attached to that is causing you emotionally to choose this job right? Because your gridded version of abundance is no longer living in, in, in an alignment of your consciousness, right? I, that's why I always tell people when I work with them, are you ready to understand that when you are doing healing work and when you do work with me, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or whatever, I always tell people or anyone, you know, any person that supports you, therapist, mentor, that you are changing, you know, that's the intention of that. You're constantly changing even if you're not working with someone, right? So are you ready to welcome that new version of you that is coming in to fully be in its power, right? To fully be in its freedom, to fully be in its joy. And if the answer is yes, then you are in the right place. You are in the right space. You are going to be held. You're going to feel fully, you know, where you need to be. Yes, you will be triggered and sometimes, but that's okay because you got it. You understand this trigger. You understand your emotions, right? And if we are manifesting an abundance into our life, but we can't be in an emotional grounding space, there's no way that we can feel and hold that abundance and manifestation. So going back to what I talked about in channeled, the dragon also means that the emotions that we ride can be the new reality that we are manifesting on a subconscious level that we actually don't want in our life. But we are doing it because this emotion was not released, right? You just had the Leo full moon. It was very emotional for a lot of people. This was very fiery, you know, for a lot of fixed signs, it was probably really intense for you because it was preparing you for this final new beginning, this final stage, this new, new start, right? And once the end, the three days after the 9th and 10th of February, 2024, for this Aquarius new moon and this lunar new year, this is where the new chapter day one starts. When I mean day one, a new book is written. And when that new book is written, it's something that you have chosen and shifted, whether the dragon of the mysticism you are mentally aware is just going to be one of those things where your guys are just going to come behind you and push you into the direction. You won't even know why you're there. You won't even know why you're in this space. They are guiding you in that place because they know that if you're human, <laughs> That's so funny because that's literally the message I got for a lot of people, including myself. The human knows that if you were consciously conscious where you were fully in your human, you probably wouldn't take those leaps. So one of the things I always like to say, if it feels right, do it. Because that chance, that opportunity will never come back again. You may get a similar one, but it won't come back again. The lesson will come back time and time again. 
but you need to get your logic and balance it because sometimes logical things don't make us feel like we're actually free right because we're constantly in our mind we're constantly thinking of what if and what are the the opportunities what are the outcomes that's exhausting for your energy when you can just allow yourself to flow with what is meant and act on that create structure within that flow within that guided message that this new moon in aquarius is bringing you and this lunar new year as well so again know that nothing is forever everything shall pass this is just a moment remember that the next thing you need to know about this Aquarius New Moon that is happening on February 9th, 10th, 2024 and the Lunar New Year is that find healing circles to come together and do moon rituals with friends, going to a small gathering. This is a time where it's a great time to heal together, right? So for a lot of you who are isolated, I'm talking to you, you know who you are that like to isolate, like to be in your own space. I get it. But you know, when you're doing all this healing and you're doing this work, like the purpose of it is to live your life as that version of you and not to hide it, right? So this is a great time to go out and it doesn't even have to be community like huge amount of people, you know? It could be just two people, it could be one person. That could be community. Defining community is unity with some other energy. At least it's, it's more than one. <laughs> that's, that's community itself, right? So looking into connecting, whether that is a moon circle or doing whatnot. Honestly, guys, I would do a breath work with you guys as a group but I am going to be in Costa Rica hosting a medicine retreat and I know that I will be finishing it and I won't have the energy to fully put in the cup for you guys. But what I will tell you is if you can let me know with a blue heart emoji and let me know, would you like me to do a spring breath work? I have some really exciting things I'm going to be sharing with you guys in the next videos. And I think it might be nice to do a group breath work ceremony um, and to really help you with these new beginnings. So let me know down below. Okay, the next thing you need to know about this Aquarius new moon that is happening on February 9th, 10th, 2024, three days before the day of it, three days after, for this also lunar new year. Be aware that scarcity mindset will purge and be brought to the surface in front of you. This is karmically and ancestrally tied for some of you. What that means is that this is a time where, again, remember when I said nothing's in retrograde, this is fully your energy. You have co-created this reality as we all have, whether it's the matrix or the unseen, we've all created it, that's the funny joke. But all this to say is that this Aquarius new moon is teaching us that scarcity will purge. So ask yourself, where do you feel scarce? Where are you triggered around abundance around this time? It could be bills, it could be a job, it could be leaving a job, it could be wanting to do an experience and feeling like you don't have the funds for it in this present moment. It could be, um, you know, someone judging you for something, whatever it is, it could be seeing someone that you saw that was struggling and you guys were in that alignment and now they're they're where they're at and then jealousy gets triggered. That happens to some people. You know, I saw this TikTok the other day and I was like, that is so true. When you're at wherever you're at, sometimes people tend to be like, oh, okay, well, you know, I'll help, I'll be with you when you're good. But when you're good, good, then the, these people really start to shut off. You know, they start to talk, right? And we have to understand to surround ourselves with community that are going to celebrate our freedom, but also celebrate when we don't, we aren't as well, when we're in our processes right? You want to be with those people who are on your good days and also in your in-between days, but you're also choosing those people to be around you for a reason, which is making you small. So the true freedom that you feel that you're shackled and trying to reach for is on the basis of your choices, of what freedom is defined as, what scarcity is defined as, as what abundance is defined as. And sometimes when we go through an experience where we feel the lowest of the low, we make that, we manifest that emotion, we manifest that idea, we think of that experience over and over again, where the body doesn't know what's time. So it makes us think that we're actually at that time where we had only $7 to our name, when you still have thousands of dollars in your bank account. Do you see what I'm saying? So one of the biggest things about Aquarius New Moon is understanding the idea of freedom and abundance and how they're connected and where you're coding that into scarcity based on past experiences that you're calling in to your reality right now when they are not true. They are just parts of our shadow that are feeding into it. So what are some new habits that you can create to support you and to help you with the scarcity that's being purged out to energetically maintain and harmonize what you're learning? 
right? So really tune into that. That's going to really help you out. And you may even see it through your ancestors. You know, it might be like you go and visit a family member and through that you see, oh, wow, that's where I got the scarcity from. Or, um, you know, something comes up and because I always say family is your biggest plant medicine ceremony. You go connect with family or friends that you grew up with. Those are the people that really teach you what you need to work on where you're at in your healing when you go around. When you isolate yourself from them, that's not gonna work, right? That's something that you're just putting on the back burner that you're gonna have to face and you will face at work or with other relations, right? Might trigger a little bit there, but I know this trigger is for you, so I love you for that. Okay, the last thing you need to know about this new moon in on February 9th to 10th, 2024, three days before the day of and three days after, as well as this lunar new year, is that defining a new idea of fighting for yourself means allowing yourself to open your heart and not be in the space of negativity and revenge. So this idea that you got to fight you know that you're you gotta you gotta do something you need to struggle you need to be in that space right what if there was no fight at all what if you could just ask for what you wanted and it was that easy why do we as humans always prepare for freedom to be a suffering that's an ancestral word that's coming out as soon as i said that i felt like an ancestor came in and they were like because we suffered you did not suffer you felt and you're holding the suffering of them, the scarcity of them, the negativity of them, the jealousy, the, you know, the old imprints. But let me tell you, at the end of this new moon in Aquarius and the lunar new year, it's gonna feel like a breath, fresh, fresh air, like, like air will just go into the lungs, into the being. And what I mean by that is that understanding that how can we put down our swords and understand that we don't have to fight we don't have to fight money energy. We don't have to fight our manifestations. We don't have to fight um, for people to see us. We don't have to fight the feeling that, that that friend will abandon us. There is no fighting. So what are the swords that you're still holding up to protect yourself out of lack of trust? Put down your swords, put down your walls and allow people to see who you are. Allow yourself to free yourself. Because I always say the triggers we have around justice, freedom, um, inequality are mirrors of where two things, one in a past life where we were on the other end of it and now we're learning to be on that side. So a common way that we see that is when people are of a certain culture in one year in one life and then in this life they've chosen to be a different culture. So they're understanding the pains of both sides. They're understanding the jealousy, the I'm going deep into this, but on all sides, right? To help them heal the greater collective. Because at that point, you are the victim and you are the non-victim. You are both, right? So it actually allows us and our soul to evolve at such a rapid space, be able to taste the pain of which is said, but also be the person who is doing the pain. Do you see what I'm saying? So think of it that way. Whatever your triggers are in this lifetime, are your openings of freedom and justice for yourself and the collective as a whole in all relations. So what I mean by that is that you have an opportunity to let go and to transmute this in this new moon and say, where do I start? Where do I start to understand that there is no divide of that. That the imbalance and the, the inequality really starts within me. And for me to look at where am I mirroring that back. So again, this Aquarius New Moon and Lunar New Year is a very potent one. I'm gonna pull a new deck. I'm so excited for you guys. I might pull my other one, but this is a new deck that I've been eyeing out forever. It's so potent. Do you feel the energy of this deck? It is potent. Okay. It's African gods and I love this deck. It's just giving me vibes of potency and deep, deep medicine and healing. So we're gonna, ooh, the decks are, they talk really loudly. So I'm gonna see what they say. But we're gonna pull one card. Maybe two for this Aquarius new moon. Okay, we got two. So we got some masculine. One of them was upside down, so I'm just gonna put them upwards. I'll tell you which one is upside down. So we have Ufun. There are times to seed and there are times to flourish. 
I love this card. I don't know if you guys can see it. There are times to seed and there are times to flourish. We also have this card here, which is Obegonda. Sometimes the best win is to choose that you're willing to lose. Okay, I love those those cards. Now let's go into why. Now this one was Uganda was actually upside down. Let's start with Ufun, which is number nineteen. Uh, where are you? Number nineteen. Where are you at? Here, number sixty-four. Okay, so this one means patient and understanding. Consolidating the material goods creates the maintain of long-term friendships and relationship, air of authority, generosity, great word of skill, and specifically speaking intelligence above, above unkindness, tendency to live many years. So understanding that this is a very karmic card, by the way, but it's really tuning into that you have tap into the patience, patience and righteousness of your own power. Step into the power of your voice. You know, tune into the needs of others as much as you tune into the needs of yourself. The more that we can tap into all parts and all perspectives, the more that we can help enlighten our path, hit enlightenment, and also hit the enlightenment for other people as well. By looking into the past experiences of those who have gone before, we can understand the consistency and maturity. And this is where I talk about being on both sides of the justice and the freedom collectively within ourselves is understanding that we were the opposite of who we are right now in another life and many other versions. So in other words, the more that we can understand ourselves, we can, the more we can understand what is separating us from freedom itself, from abundance, and from the extension of life and the life experience of other people as well. Ooh, that's a deep one. Number 30, Ubiganda, which is also a really big one. It was upside down, so it's reverse. So it's saying that for this card, Hey guys, my battery died, so we'll have to finish. My plant is in this space with us. Okay, so Obaganda, which means uncompromised, tendency to experience depression and psychological issues, loneliness and jealousy, as well as toxic relationships. Because it was upside down, that means the opposite. It's actually meaning that right now is a time of happiness. It's an opportunity for you to change and shift from depression, loneliness, jealousy, and you're feeling more like you're ready to get your energy back. Your energy is coming up, you're shifting, your relationships are becoming more healthy, and you're also being exposed to better relationships in your life. Okay, this is also a time where everything seems to be better. Like there's almost like you were at the bottom before your energy was negative at the point at that point. But now it's opened up to a very positive willingness to expand. And you're you're learning the hard way for some of you that there's no way of avoiding life. And this is your time to thrive and to to be who you came to be. So those were the cards. I'm going to see if there's any other cards um no harm can hurt those who live in peace with themselves i love this card so again there's a dove here representing peace so this is an opportunity for you to enter into the abundance and of peace that you don't have to worry about anything anymore that you can allow yourself to free your being to free yourself finally from all the things that you've been holding back from so i hope you guys enjoyed this video Sorry about the whole like ending. <laughs> My battery always dies. Like I always like end up charging it and then it dies. But c'est la vie. We are here on the phone. Thank you, technology. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down below how you're feeling for this Aquarius new moon and this lunar new year. Happy new year to all of us as we start this shift. And um, let's make something fun in the comments. What is one intention you have for this year for yourself based on the energies and what you feel in this present moment? Um, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, like, subscribe, share it with a friend. The more that we can work with the elements, the more that we can heal ourselves, the better that us as a collective can do this work. So again, share it with whoever you feel is called. And also don't forget that I am also opening my one-on-ones for the spring and summer. There are still a few spots left for the goddess retreat, which is such a potent retreat. This is a retreat that will really 
tune you into shifting the woman that you are and sharing and shedding into the woman you came here to be the soul that this woman body meant was meant to do and to step into and then the ancestral retreat is about tapping into our ancestors kind of relates with this aquarius new moon and uh it's really coming into communion and clearing any karmic debt any pains and stepping into the power of our ancestral lineage as well as our gifts so it's gonna be a really potent potent retreat so you can go apply down below as registration closes soon and i hope you have a beautiful aquarius new moon i love you so much i'll see you in the next video bye